the world's greatest radio. We give you a reason to stay. Radio, the way it should be heard. The views and opinions expressed are those of the host and guests and not necessarily those of TalkTainmentRadio.com, 3MR Production, its ownership, management, or staff. We've got the power. This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. Radio, the way it should be heard. And now... Mr. Neely Fuller. If you do not understand white supremacy, which is racism, what it is, and how it works, everything else that you understand will only confuse you. Only confuse you. Only confuse you. Well, this is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, Jr. I'm Brother Kahari. Uh, we sit in with Mr. Fuller every Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that's live, but you can also catch it. Catch us on the podcast, and you can go to Compensatory Concept. Uh, I'm sorry, you can go to TalkTainmentRadio.com, and then you can look up Compensatory. Go to Programs and look up Compensatory Concept, and voila, there we are uh, with the um, broadcast that we do with Mr. Fuller. But if you want to catch us live, uh, you can also do that, and that's one eight seven seven nine three two. Nine seven six six one eight seven seven nine three two nine seven six six. This is the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Good morning, Mr. Fuller. How are you, sir? I'm still learning, Mr. Fuller. Um, we are knee deep as the Funkament par- Parliament uh, Funkament uh, Funkadelic Parliament would say, or Parliament Funkadelic would say the. Uh, ban they would say we knee deep and we are knee deep into politics so uh that's what i want to focus our attention on is that area known as politics but before we get to politics mr fuller uh can you tell us about the name of your books you know we have two in uh, classic works how can we get those books etc mr fuller the basic book is called The United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept. And there's a subtitle for that book that is more explanatory, and that is a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism. And racism is defined as white supremacy. The second book has the same basic title because it's just an extension of the first book and that basic title uh, the the, uh, ingredients of that book basically is a word guide Mm -hmm. that explains a lot of the words that are used in the basic book Mm -hmm. because words are tools that sometimes have to be modified and I've modified a lot of definitions in the word guide that are tailored to counteract, hopefully, the system of racism so that it will best lead toward the production of justice because many of the words that are in place now in our general language are designed to support the system of racism, which means mistreatment of people based on color. And we want to eliminate that from the language as much as, as much as possible if we have the correct intentions and we all should have the correct intentions mm-hmm. that's both white people and non-white people so we should get the language straight first so the language is not poisonous and uh, since we're talking about politics political language needs to be purified so that when people talk to each other they are not being led into into the traditional poisonous mode in which case, just like in a computer, you get out of it what you put into it. Okay. Um, Okay. Mr. Fuller, um, last week the Republican convention took place. Uh, This week the Democratic convention is ongoing. Um, but, But there's been... 
from where I sit, uh, we'll start with the first convention, the Republican National Convention, uh, held in Tampa, Florida. Um, <clears throat> I watched it as I'm watching the Democratic Convention, but in particular, I noticed that my interpretation, of course, this is how I interpret it, and I want to get your spin on it or your thoughts about it. Um, my interpretation of it was I heard a lot of cold talk, an enormous amount of cold talk. And um, I kept listening and I took my head, my notebook, and I was jotting down all of the phrase. But one of the most interesting ones uh, was this Clint Eastwood piece. Now, some would say Clint Eastwood is is John Wayne all over again, because if you look at the date, you look at the history, the parallel between the two. Clint Eastwood always runs second to John Wayne in terms of historical movie going popularity. So since John Wayne is gone and Clint Eastwood is here. But speaking to an empty chair, that was quite codified, in my opinion. Let me get your feel for that, Mr. Full. I don't know if you had a chance to watch it, see it, or whatever. I'm sure you've heard about it. But uh, if you've watched it, if you had a chance to study it, give me your thoughts on that Clint Eastwood speaking to an empty chair. Well, I saw it, and uh, it seems like it was a uh, disparagement of President Barack Obama in total, in the sum total. In other words, he was talking down to him, more or less, in his absentia and saying that, well, he's not quite got it together, that he's really, in a way of speaking, the entire scenario was that, sir, basically you're a joke. And I'm making a joke about you. And you should be regarded as a joke. Might be a nice guy, but basically you're a joke. When it comes to getting anything serious done, you're not a serious person. And I think that's the general flavor. I think that's the general flavor of the white supremacist view is that, well, after all, we did raise these people. We control them. They know only what we tell them. They worked on our plantations. We dragged them all over the world and we dominate them all over the world, even today. So we really don't need them for anything except for amusement and to prop up our egos. That's the white supremacist ideology. That's not saying that Mr. Eastwood is a white supremacist. I suspect he could be one because I'm duty-bound to do that according to compensatory logic. That, and that would be interesting because the same Mr. Eastwood is currently married to an, a black woman. Yes. And according to compensatory counter-racist logic, you shouldn't be doing that type of activity, sexual activity, sexual intercourse. Now, if he's not having sexual intercourse, that's a different story. But if he's engaging in sexual intercourse or any type of sexual play, and presumably that could be, then that qualifies for child molestation because under the system of white supremacy and according to counter-racist logic, in my opinion, when people are not equal in a relationship, one is subordinate to the other. Mm -hmm. And in a system of racism, all non-white people are subordinate to people who are classified as white. So therefore, their sexual intercourse between white and non-white in a system of white supremacy, then the non-white person is a child that's being abused. Hmm. So that's sexual child abuse. That's the Sandusky model in total. Sandusky being, being the guy from... Uh associated with Penn State University, Penn yes. State University scandal. Yes. yes, he's been convicted, I think. Yes, he has. Say, has he been convicted? Uh, he was found uh, He was found guilty on, on multiple charges, and he's yes. awaiting okay. sentencing, I believe. So that of child abuse. Mm -hmm. Well, massive child abuse within a racial context, within a racist world, 
and that's what we have according to the evidence, then a white person who engages in sexual intercourse with a non-white person in a system of white supremacy automatically is engaging in sexual child abuse because the non-white person, regardless of age, regardless of intelligence, regardless of anything, is in a childlike position. So if that person is being abused. Now, now, Mr. Fuller, going back to the empty chair, uh, would that suggest that um, uh, black people, even at the highest level, are not to be respected? They have no intelligence. Uh, they are vacant, mentally vacant, uh, incompetent. All of those things that are, have historically been associated with, with black people in positions, especially in leaders, so-called leadership positions. Mr. Fuller, let me let me get your let me get your let me get your thoughts on that. Because every non-white person on the planet in the system of white supremacy, if they are given a so-called leadership title, the title is phony. Because they are not in a leadership position. So therefore that person is just pretending and is being told that you are this and you are that and that you are the supreme authority, but told by whom? By the white supremacists, because we are in what? A system of white supremacy. Now, I want to qualify that. If we're not in a system of white supremacy, then everything that I'm saying is false. But if we're in a system of white supremacy, then logically speaking, the non-white person is in a subordinate position in all areas of activity 24-7 every time he or she takes a breath in now, every area of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, in a subordinate position. And if you're in a subordinate position, you're not in a leadership position. That's the mathematical equation. Also, what what struck me as interesting uh, from the vacant chair piece is that he stood up and looked down. Uh, it, it was like it was like a, a child. It was like he was scolding a child. He stood up at the podium, then he looked down at the chair to to indicate that he was looking down on this person and that this person was childlike. That's what was coming across for me from that whole construct. Did you get that impression, Mr. Fuller? That's exactly what I've been saying all along. Child. Child abuse. Shut up. You tell the child to shut up. I'm giving the orders here. I'm in charge. You're not in charge of anything. You're pretending. You're a phony. I made you into a phony, maybe. Or somebody did. But you're not real. You're not even here. You're not here on this stage. In fact, you're not anywhere. You don't even exist in the capacity that you're presenting yourself. You only exist as a subordinate, if you exist at all, in the system of white supremacy. So shut up, because your words don't mean anything anyway. Like the words of a child do not mean anything. Hmm, that that's um, heavy. There were other phrasings. We built this. We own this, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, there was a lot of that, and a lot of phrasing about the fear of the darkness and all of that kinds of stuff. I mean, that was so rampant. It almost you almost heard it in every speech. I mean, it, uh, uh, Governor Christie talking about being near the. Um, as he and his friends were sitting around singing about near the edge of darkness or something like darkness at, at the edge of town. I mean, you know, what are you saying? Over there where black people live? I mean, it, it's deep. It's deep, The all of the implications and, in terms of who they were really trying to communicate with. And they, obviously, they weren't trying to communicate with black people. Uh, they've made a decision, politically speaking, to go in a certain direction. And so it appeared to many people 
that this was heavy cold speak, heavy cold speak as a part of that uh, convention. And so as we move forward now, now we see the now we see if you, Mr. Fuller, were running the Democratic convention and you were in charge of writing the speeches for the key people, what emphasis, what points would you have them focus on and repeat over and over again using as many different words as they can to get the message out? What would you tell them to say? Oh, I would say exactly what I, I say every day, and that is I would address the white world, for one thing. I mean, basically, not asking black people anything. I would first address, like I will do right now, to all of the white people in the world. Where do we go from here? Can we all just get along, like Rodney King, King said? Just a series of questions. And if so, what's the plan? What is it you want for yourself, and what do you want for me? See, everybody has asked what they want for themselves, but what do you want for the other person in every area of activity? Don't skip over any areas, because this is crucial. Just be honest. Tell us what you want and what you don't want. I have to know that. That's crucial. Everybody's just talking at each other. But they're not really talking to each other in all these conventions, so-called, or whatever you want to call them, uh, political ceremonies, exercises. Ask the correct questions and answer those questions. I mean, and get everybody's opinion, because everybody who's walking around on the planet has one. So you want to know exactly what do you want for yourself, and what do you want for me? Just not for yourself. What do you want for me? What position do you want me to have? And for what reasons? And what do you expect the constructive result to be? We're all here together. We're stuck here for a mm -hmm. while, mm -hmm. as Rodney King said. Mm -hmm. So what do you people want? You people meaning everybody, nine, white, and white. And then you... Lay it all out after everybody says what they want. And then people say, okay, now that we've gotten what everybody wants, what is it you don't want in regards to other people? Mm -hmm. What is it you don't want to see them doing? What is it you are definitely against mm -hmm. if they're going to be involved with you? And we want a list. Do's and don'ts. And have that kind of code for everybody. And once everybody sits around the table and agrees on what everybody wants, what everybody doesn't want, for themselves and everybody else, and then you collate all of that, sort it out, argue all the different points, then uh, have the arguments subside into an, an intelligent discussion mm -hmm. for you You'll start off with a shouting match first, but then once you reach the point where you say, well, we've got to stop shouting at each other and listen to each other, all right, and everybody just go over again what it is we want, what it is we don't want for everybody, and then you will have clarity because that's the one thing that you definitely have to have uh -huh. out of these two conventions and whatnot. You have to have clarity, and you have to have people being honest about what they're saying. And so do we hear that? I don't know. Well, I, don't I think so. I, I would say it's knee, it's knee deep and piled higher at both levels. Uh, I don't think we're going to get anywhere, anything anywhere near what is what is actually truthful. I think there might be some truth sprinkled in there, but how much is it, it, it's kind of hard to say. What would you want to come out in the area of politics? That's the um what area is that, Mr. Fuller? Is that the eighth area, Mr. Fuller? That's the sixth area. The sixth area. Um, politics is very, very important, uh, like all of the other areas in life are. But uh, Mr. Fuller is, is addressing these questions and more. But the question that I want to ask everyone, um, what do you want out of this political season? Uh, are you really understanding what's being said? Are you decoding the language 
at both of these conventions, any other political convention that's going on? Do you really understand the impact that this stuff has on your day-to-day -day life? Huh? Stay right there. More to come with Mr. Neely Fuller and the Compensatory Concept, heard exclusively on TalkTamerRadio.com. TalkTamerRadio.com. We don't just talk. We don't just entertain. We've combined talk radio with the latest in online entertainment. With the ability to listen live at no cost 24-7. We are the premier online radio station. Outperforming the digital quality of our competitors, our shows are produced in a state-of-the-art studio by the best radio professionals in the business. Hosting live shows on location at some of the area's greatest and most popular events, we give you exactly what you want to hear with talk radio that matters to you. Join us online at TalkTainmentRadio.com where you can listen live or play podcasts from the best shows in online talk radio. We give you a reason to come. We give you a reason to stay. TalkTainmentRadio.com. Radio, the way it should be heard. Which insurance agency has been in business since 1855? The Palmer Miller Nelson Agency in Clintonville. How do they stay around for so long? Simple. They know how to serve your insurance needs professionally yet caringly with plans for just about any budget. For home, auto, life, health, business, and umbrella policies, even bonding and identity theft protection. Your agents for Grange, Westfield, and Ohio Casualty Insurance. The Palmer Miller Nelson Insurance Agency. 3215 North High Street, Clintonville. 614-281-6300. Online at pmnins.com. The United Independent Compensatory Code System concept by Neely Fuller is considered as one of the substantial and basic books for understanding and effectively countering racism. Neely Fuller will turn upside down everything you've heard and everything you think you know about racism and how it works. Call area code 202-484-5461, 202-484-5461. Brown sugar on sports. Fashion in sports. Femininity in sports. The psychological impact of sports. Hi, I'm Brown Sugar from Brown Sugar on Sports. Coming soon to TalkTainmentRadio.com. Dispatch.com is your hometown homepage providing breaking news and updates around the clock. The Dispatch.com network of sites can also help your business in these tough times with the tightest targeting in Central Ohio. The Dispatch.com network has ranked number one among all local media sites for more than two years straight. And together with Yahoo, we're the only network that can deliver your message to 90% of the local online audience. Dispatch.com, customized solutions to reach potential customers. To learn more, call or visit Dispatch.com slash hometown. I don't recycle. I mean, we can just find another planet for your kids to live on, you know? Log on to you got to be kidding.org and learn about all the ways you can recycle. Hey, recycling's just not my thing. Don't be that guy. Log on to you got to be kidding.org. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. I'm Tammy. I got your lucky number heard exclusively on Conversate in the AM at 11 11 AM Mondays and Fridays. Make sure you tune in for your lucky number. Punch in TalkTeamAtRadio.com and click on Listen Live and listen for your lucky number. We've got the power. Justice is better than racism. This is the Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Heard exclusively on TalkTeamAtRadio.com. Radio, the way. It should be heard, the world's greatest radio. I'm Brother Kahari, sitting in, of course, uh, every week live with Mr. Neely Fuller. If you don't get a chance to catch us live, you can always go to TalkTainmentRadio.com, hit up programs, and then punch in the compensatory concept. And voila, it's right there, podcast live, where you can download the shows that you miss. All right, um, we are dealing with politics what it is that we're supposed to get out of it. Mr. Fuller, of course, has that in his first, wo in his first uh, work where politics is the sixth area of activity. Mr. Fuller, what is it that we're supposed to get out of politics? Why is politics? First of all, what is politics? Uh, politics? The definition of it. And what is it that we're supposed to get out of it? 
politics is any interaction between one person and another. We often think of politics as just going somewhere and and punching something on a card or something, or writing something on a piece of paper, and then say, okay, I have participated in politics. And some people will even say, well, you shouldn't mix politics with anything else, particularly you shouldn't mix up religion with politics. Well, that raises some questions. Can you have politics without people? Because that's what politics means, people. People interaction. Police has to do with people. The word P-O-L, that prefix there. See, that leads into politics, police, being polite. That's interaction between people. So what is religion? Religion is a strong belief backed up by action. So if you collate those two together, logically speaking, then you can't have a religion without politics because politics is all about people. You can't have church without people. How are you going to have a church and you don't have any people in the church? Mm -hmm. They call them church members. And they are people. They say, we want people to come to the church. Right, called congregation. A congregation of people, not a congregation of, of uh, sheep, uh, for the most part. That's not what they're referring to. They might, in a colloquial sense, uh, refer to the people as being sheep or something like that, followers of a doctrine and whatnot. But they are considered to be people. So it's all interactive. Anything that people are engaged in, you're engaged in a political action. When you're talking to someone, that's politics. And if you're doing it with great conviction, expressing your opinion and enforcing that opinion or something like that, that can even be considered to be religious and our law. So politics is engaged in everything that people do, law, sex education, economics, it's all politics. In fact, I think that Sun Tzu, the person who wrote a book called The Art of War, said something to the effect of war is just an extension of politics. Mm -hmm. So politics, you can't have war between people without people having war. So that's political. So what is it that we're supposed to get out of this thing called politics? You're supposed to get what we should have had in the first place, a peaceful world. Meaning, you can't have peace without justice. And justice means you've got to guarantee that no person is mistreated and guarantee that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help all of the time without fail. That has never been achieved. So that's what people are supposed to be having political conventions, quote, unquote, for, to try to figure out how no one is going to get mistreated and the persons who need help the most are going to get the most constructive help. That's a compensatory definition for justice mm -hmm. because there's no legal definition for justice. I made that one up. And I think it'll stand the test of time until someone tells me of a better one, and then I will adopt that one. That would be the compensatory process, too. Always try to do the very best thing that can be done. That's very important. And in a political arena, always try to figure out what is the best thing to do, not just do something. Try to figure out all out of all of the some things to do, you want to do the very, very, very best that can ever be done by anybody, anywhere. But, Mr. Fuller, in politics, there's a lot of secrecy. They have something they call top secret. They have something they call Federal Bureau of Investigation. They have something they call Central Intelligence Agency. They have something they call National Security Agency. What do all of that, this is a part of politic or maybe policing as you would say what does all of this mean when you say 
When somebody says I work for the Central Intelligence Agency, what goes through your mind? Well, that you have some centralized intelligence. And you have an agent who will carry that out. Carry out the job of having centralized intelligence. But I would have to ask an agent of a central intelligence agency what is your job? And the main questions I would ask is just what we're talking about now. What's the goal of everybody? What's the goal of everybody on this planet or should be? Political goal, educational goals, all of them. So your central intelligence agency, does it have the goal of producing justice, meaning guaranteeing that no person is mistreated and guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help? Is that what your centralized intelligence is supposed to produce? Because if it's not, then I have some more questions. What is it supposed to produce? Hmm. And this notion of secrets, Mr. Fuller, you've heard the term top secrets. Now, all that comes under politics when someone tells you this is top secret or only those who have a need to know will know, what does all of that say to you, Mr. Fuller? All of that says to me is exactly what the people are saying. I am keeping a secret. So I say keeping a secret from whom in order to accomplish what? Are you trying to keep a secret in order to accomplish the production of justice? Because if you're not trying to keep a secret in order to accomplish the production of justice, what are you keeping a secret for? Should we ever, under the code, keep secrets, Mr. Fuller? No. So no. All, all, should, all things should be known? All things should be known because... If you're going to include all people on the planet with the correct intentions, what kind of secret do you need? Hmm. When you have secrets, you 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 are doing something to uh, get ready to harm someone, most likely. Uh, do you I'm associate not... secrets with deception? Yes. Yes. When you're, when you're trying to keep a secret, you are preparing to deceive someone. Mm. You're trying to give an illusion of some type. So why are you doing this? It all comes down to what you're keeping the secret for. Are you trying to help someone? Or are you trying to hurt someone? And whom are the people you're trying to help? Well, let's say something happened in the family. And there was some information that you didn't want to tell the child. You didn't feel the child needed to know, had a need to know. Here we go. Um, and so you called yourself protecting that child. Is that correct? Would, what would the code say about that? It means you don't want to confuse the child. You're not really keeping a secret. You're just withholding information because if you explain to the child what is going on, and the child doesn't understand. See, it all comes down what the child is able to understand. I mean, I guess if the child is like many biblical scholars said, that if you're the Christ child, if you are Jesus, and they say Jesus was the anointed, proclaimed son of God, mm -hmm. which means he was very wise even as a child, then he doesn't have a child like mine. So it could absorb the information. See, the whole key here is what qualifies you to be a child. You're not a child if you can absorb information and know how to use the information in a constructive manner. So you do withhold information from anyone if it's not going to have a constructive result. Yeah, and, and see, so what is what separates withholding information and secrets because you're really not. A, a secret has to do with stealth, where you're going to harm someone. Ah. But just withholding information 
means if I tell this person what I'm going to tell this person, the person is not going to understand what I'm saying and why I'm saying it. Therefore, the person is going to be confused, and that's something you never want to do. Is tell a person, you don't want to tell a person anything, how to drive a truck, and tell them in such a way. Use such language to that person, because you'll be speaking in a foreign language to the person if you're telling them, actually telling them the truth. You're revealing something, but the person doesn't understand what you're saying. You have the correct intentions, but the person is not receiving it. You're not on the same page. You're not on the same wavelength. So then the person takes off down the road in the truck with a misunderstanding of what was being said. And the person runs off the road because the person didn't know how to make that curve, how to make the corner. The person misinterpreted what was being conveyed. That's confusion. You don't ever want to do anything to confuse a person unless you have in mind that you're going to destroy that person. Now, some political leaders would, would say, I am withholding or protecting top secret information because most of the people, if they knew it in this social order because of the way they've been conditioned, it would mess up the social order. Uh, they don't need to know that they that UFOs are real, for example. They don't need to know what's in the center of the earth or at the bottom of the earth, for example. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And they're saying that in order to protect the social order as it is, I will classify this as a secret, not out of deception, but to protect people. If you heard that, Mr. Fuller, what would be your response? In the system of white supremacy, I would believe that the white supremacists are just coming up with another way of doing harm, ultimately, ultimately, to non-white people, because the system of white supremacy is the dominant government on the planet. So anything that you hear about that's being done that has a lot of power behind it, you can suspect that the usual suspects or getting ready to do something harmful to the people who are classified as non-white. That's just the way it is. I didn't invent it. I discovered it because I had to, because I was told that I was in a system of white supremacy in the old days in no uncertain terms. Now, in the modern days, I'm told that the system of white supremacy no longer exists. Correct. But who's doing the telling? Mm-hmm. I suspect it's the same people who told me that it did exist and that I should honor it and obey it and bow down to it and accept it as my fate. Now, under the refinement of the system, according to my calculations, according to logic, they are now saying, well, we have it in place but you are not supposed to act like it's in place because it's refined now. And if you don't act like it's in place, you just might be chastised well, for act- not being an excellent actor. Right. Oh, yeah, when you, when you reveal certain things, uh, go off code almost. Political leaders, uh, you know, all the conventions, they stand up and they brag about the end of racism, Mr. Fuller. I mean, we hear it constantly. Uh, even those who are so-called liberals or radical, they talk about, look at how much work we've done in the civil rights movement, how it was back in those days. But now, uh, look at how far we've come. We've eliminated. We are, they stand up and give endless speeches about the elimination of racism. Are they, is this deceptive or is it true, Mr. Fuller? In the refinement stage of racism, and that's where I think that we are now, you can expect white supremacists who are dedicated to the system of white supremacy to say that because they believe in deceiving people. That is the center of their power, the epicenter. And they back it up with direct violence when people
people do not believe their deception. No matter how liberal or conservative, you're saying it doesn't matter whether they're liberal, radical, or conservative, if they're white supremacists, the same deception goes on. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Fuller? Including the use of those terms. I don't know what a conservative is. What are you trying to conserve? And conserve it for what purpose? What, what do you what, you know? What do you mean by conserve? You're conserving something, meaning you're taking something unto you that you're 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 holding back something or something. I guess that's what conservation means. It means you are conserving and reserving something of value. Okay, what what is it that you're conserving? I mean, uh, you know, what are you conserving it for? In order to do what? Or if you're liberalizing something. In order to do what? If you're not doing it to produce a product called justice, meaning guaranteeing that no person is mistreated, and guaranteeing that the person who needs help the most gets the most constructive help, what are you conserving for, or what are you liberalizing for, if that's not what you're trying to do? Because it's all about justice. That's the focus. Everything is supposed to be about justice, followed by correctness, which means balance between people and things. Mr. Fuller, stay right there. More to come as we begin to look into what's happening at the Democratic Convention. We've covered a little bit what happened at the Republican. Now we're going to turn our focus. What should President Obama say this week? Stay right there. More to come on the compensatory concept heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com. TalkTainmentRadio.com. Food for thought. Recently, I took a trip by airplane. Needless to say, it was an experience. I have concluded that to get through security without much effort, one must go to the airport half-naked. Wearing no jewelry of any kind, even wearing plastic jewelry, I was still detained to have my ears more closely inspected. Shoes have to be removed, which is a definite inconvenience during the summer, since I don't like to wear socks. It's unnerving walking barefoot in the same footprints of hundreds of thousands of other people. As I removed my infinity scarf that I had wrapped around my neck three times, I felt a twinge of embarrassment when I almost choked myself trying to get out of it. Finally, through security, I felt closer to my fellow travelers, all of us having to retrieve our belongings and get redressed to start our journeys. Next trip, I will wait to get fully dressed at the airport after passing through security. That's another Food for Thought. To hear additional Food for Thought, stay tuned to TalkTainmentRadio.com. Radio, the way it should be heard. Do you like sweet tea or do you love sweet tea? Hi, I'm Jackie. Well, I've got the tea for you. All natural, authentic, southern style, sweet iced tea. It is distributed throughout the state of Ohio and Kentucky. JCS Sweet Iced Tea.com. Phone number is 614-203-0690. JC's Sweet Iced Tea. Hi, this is Larry Haberman. Give me a call at 614-578-4070 for finely tailored clothing and furnishings for men. We have notch lapels and peak lapels and two-button coats, double-breasted coats, three-button coats. I work by appointment only. Everybody's time is valuable, especially my clients. I will come to your home or office. I'm very accessible. You can reach me at 614-578-4070. I'm Larry Haberman, and we appreciate your business. Why aren't you ready? You know, since you got this new DVR from Time Warner Cable, I'm pretty much the master of my time. Recording, rewinding, I've got the power to bend the space-time continuum to my own needs. Yeah, you better fast-forward yourself off the couch. Shh, wait. Uh, What time's it now? Two seconds later. Let's go. Watch TV on your time. All it takes is the push of a button with a DVR from Time Warner Cable. Call 1-888-TW-CABLE. Time Warner Cable, the power of you. Are there hidden sex words that impact your brain? Are there secret images and symbols that manipulate and control your child's mind and behavior? Why are so many youth unable to resist the destructive sexual messages beamed into their brain without them knowing they are being manipulated? Do you want answers? Get the new book, Sex Code War by Kahari and Ahara, coming soon. 
earn a degree in business administration from Globe University and enter into a career with high job placement and be more employable in a competitive job market. Build a career in the private sector, become a consultant, work in a government agency, go the nonprofit route, or use your entrepreneurial skills to open your own business. Your success starts here with a degree in business administration from Globe University. Inquire online at globeuniversity.edu. The United Independent Compensatory Code System concept by Neely Fuller is considered as one of the substantial and basic books for understanding and effectively countering racism. Neely Fuller will turn upside down everything you've heard and everything you think you know about racism and how it works. Call area code 202-484-5461, 202-484-5461. I'm Tammy. I got your lucky number heard exclusively on Conversate in the AM at 11, 11 AM, Mondays and Fridays. Make sure you tune in for your lucky number. Punch in TalkTeamAtRadio.com and click on Listen Live and listen for your lucky number. We've got the power. Justice is better than racism. This is the compensatory concept with Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com. Radio, the way it should be heard, the world's greatest radio. I'm Brother Kahar, sitting in every week with Mr. Mr. Neely Fuller. You can hear us live every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Or you can go to TalkTainmentRadio.com, click on Programs, and look for the compensatory concept and get your download. It's right there for you, waiting on you. Um, Mr. Fuller, um, President Obama will speak, I believe, uh, Friday, I'm sorry, Thursday. I believe it is Thursday. I could be wrong. You see, Thursday, or Friday, I think it's three-day convention. He'll speak Thursday night. Uh, and I'm sure the world will be listening. Uh, what do you want him to say? Let's say you are now writing his remarks. What would you put in there from the beginning to the end? Mr. Fuller, you have the stage. Go ahead. I would say, well, since he's supposed to be representing all of the people, I just put myself in myself in the position that he has. And I have questions, really. Uh, to the people that I am supposed to be representing. And how do I represent them? I represent what they think should be done. And I would say, okay, I am trying to produce justice. This is what I'm trying to do. Guaranteeing that no person is mistreated anywhere for any reason and guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help in every area of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war, and to make a study of what every constructive result will be for every move that is made. Now, that's my platform. Now. What platform do you all want me to be your president representing you as? Because that's what I'm here for. Otherwise, I'll step down now. I'll just retire. And you can do what you want to do. But if you want me to represent you, this is the way that I am presenting myself as a representer of what you want. Because in the first place, I don't want to represent you if you don't have the correct intentions. None of you. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Mr. Foucault, okay, so that would be, the, you would conclude, and that would be it? Just about, in that you might say that uh, in a sophisticated manner, or maybe not so sophisticated. But I tried to make that message clear right from the jump. Mm -hmm. We're not going to do any play acting here. Once you sign on now, I don't want to hear any Monday morning quarterbacking out of any of you. All right. This is All the right. way I'm going with it. Okay, well, let's go forward then. Let's say that's how you open up, and the people people have said, yeah, go ahead and come, go ahead and finish, go ahead and keep going. All right, what, what are you going to say next? 
that would be the sum total of it. I mean, That's you know, it? In, in other words, yes, I have to find out what they want. See, because people are phony. In a, I know that I'm in a system of racism. Mm. We need no more phoniness about nothing. We need straight talk. We need straight talk. Straight talk. So you say talking straight, meaning tell the truth tell about the whole everything truth, nothing that you but say. The truth. Absolutely. I mean, just like in court, we're in court. Look at it like everybody's in court and everybody's on trial. So what you want now is the truth. We got to get serious. Not just waving flags and clapping hands and going around, I mean, making small talk. And, uh, you know, this is Hallelujah Day for the umpteenth time on the plantation. No. All right, let's say, let's say the people are serious. If you had to lay out four or five things that you want people to do, the four or five key most important things you would want all the people to do all the time, what would you say, Mr. Fuller? I couldn't do it in four or five. It would have to be the entire nine of all right. areas of activity. Let's and go, would, let's and, go and now. All of the ingredients that go in there. Well, the economics and the education, in other words, use your time and energy to do something constructive. No more constructive nonsense. We're going to examine everything. We're going to have a society that's constructive. We're going to be all about being constructive. Even our entertainment is going to be constructive. That's what I'm running on. I mean, we don't want any more non-constructive entertainment that consists of nine millimeters popping in the night and yellow tape all over the street and glorifying make my day. No more of that. You don't make our day by taking people out of this world at the sound of a 44 Magnum. Why not make your day by putting your hands to a plow? Seeing how that works and have fun doing it. Hmm. You don't have to make, have fun by running up and down the neighborhood, drive by shooting. You can have fun painting the barn. Let's get in a constructive mode and see how that works right across the board and have fun doing it. Get along with people, like Rodney King said. We had Martin Luther King, and we had Rodney King. And two different types of personalities with two different types of objectives and whatnot. But out of the mouths of babes sometimes comes something that makes sense. Can't we all just get along? We are stuck here for a while. And that's the way I would approach. That would be my platform. Let's be honest. Let's come clean on everything. How do you really feel? The average white person out there who is smiling and, and you know, and profiling and all like that, how do you really feel about being in a world with black people when you pass them on the street? What do you really think about that black person? What do you really think? Not what you're told to think. What do you really think? And going beyond thought, what are you going to do about it? When you are with your comrades, when you're sitting around the family table, what is it that you say when there's no black people around? What do you tell them, the kind of world that you want? And when you talk to black people, can you give them what you call honest criticism? And can that black person, you have to talk to the black person too, can you accept? the truth from a person, even if it hurts, and then work on trying to do the most constructive thing with the information that you receive, because it's all about being constructive. Everything in the universe is in one of two categories, constructive, non-constructive. There's no such thing as in between. Everything that you say and do is either going to have a constructive effect or non-constructive effect. There's no such thing as in between. People keep acting like everything is in between. Oh, well, yeah, when you consider this side, and then when you consider the other side, well, let's, let's take the middle of the road. Or let's don't swing too much to the left, and don't swing too much to the right. And they have all of these linguistic, 
cliches that mean absolutely nothing and tells nobody what to do about things. Everything is about do's and don'ts. Everything is about what to say that has the most constructive effect and what not to say. Everything. Not some things. Everything. And what you should always want to be, everybody walking the planet, is always be in the constructive mode as best they possibly can. And when you make mistakes, you just simply say, and you're going to make them, because that's the price of progress. But when you make them, you say, I made a mistake. That's why they have erasers on pencils. You have already preordained that you're going to make mistakes. So when you make them, you reach over, get your eraser, you erase the mistake, correct it, and go on. Babies fall down before they in the process of trying to learn to walk. That goes with the territory. And both white people and non-white people are supposed to constantly say, okay, I made a mistake, it was an honest mistake, or maybe a not-so-honest mistake. But it was a mistake. It was something that should not have been done. And I'm going to do my max to see to it that it's not done again. And everybody should expect everybody else to do the same. So that we are wind up on that page where we should be. So we can all get along because we're all stuck here for a while. So once you once you once you've said those words, Mr. Fuller, once you've put that position out there and you've looked at this, I, I gotta ask you a closing thought. Should we vote and if we vote what knowledge should we be voting with while we vote? We should be voting with the knowledge that we're not going to get constructive results because everybody is still in a phony mode. I mean, every, you know, we get in this thing of hallelujah time, I mean, for a few hours uh, a day, Everybody throw their arms around each other, and I've gotten to the place personally where I don't particularly care to see people hugging each other and high-fiving each other, and then 15 minutes later, nine millimeters popping all over the neighborhood and whatnot. I mean, all of that phoniness that goes with the system of white supremacy because it's a phony institution based on phony principles because it's based on lies and deception and cruelty, and it should be replaced with a system of justice. So I don't expect anything out of this election except more of the same, of the regardless same. of which way it goes. Mm -hmm. And so, but people should be, even during the election and after the election, keeping that in mind and saying, we're going to have more of the same nonsense after the election, but we will still work for the best in spite of the nonsense. And the best means a world dominated by justice and correctness, meaning guaranteeing that nobody's mistreated and guaranteeing that the person who needs help the most gets the most constructive help. Mr. Fuller, we've got about a minute and a half. Should we ever vote based on race or color? Yes, because we're in a racist society. And so all of our voting will be about justice which means eliminating racism. So all your votes should be based on what will help to replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. If not now, hopefully in the near future. Well, we can all work for that because that's the only game in town right now. That's the only government on the planet is the system of white supremacy. So you're voting within that system, but you should be just doing the best you can with some very defective tools. And so it is important to vote, but to understand what the reality is behind the vote. Absolutely. So you don't build up your expectations. Like we had. Like we did before. And like I knew would happen. Yeah. Because disappointment comes from expectations. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. We appreciate it. Thank you.
Thanks for listening to The Compensatory Concept with Mr. Neely Fuller, heard exclusively on TalkTainmentRadio.com, the world's greatest radio. The most important question in all racial matters is why one should always ask it. Radio, the way it should be heard. You got the power. Radio, the way it should be heard.